Today on the show, we're drinking Miller Genuine Draft, a cold filtered beer with humble origins. Miller Brewing Company was founded in 1855 by Frederick Miller after his emigration from Germany. The enterprise remained in the family until 1966, where conglomerate W.R. Grayson Company bought Miller from Frederick Miller's granddaughter, who objected to alcohol. In 1969, Philip Morris bought Miller from W.R. Grace for $130 million, outbidding PepsiCo. Then, in 2002, South African breweries bought Miller from Philip Morris for $3.6 billion worth of stock and $2 billion in debt to form SAB Miller, with Philip Morris retaining a 36% ownership share and 24.99% voting rights. Then, in 2006, Miller Brewing purchased Sparks and Steel Reserve brands from McKenzie River Corporation for $215 million in cash. Miller had been producing both brands prior to this purchase. Well, that leads us to 2007, where SAB and Molson Coors combined their U.S. operations in a joint venture called Miller Coors. SAB Miller owned 58% of the unit, which operated in the United States, but not in Canada, where Molson Coors is strongest. Molson Coors owned the rest of the joint venture, but the companies had equal voting power. In September 2015, Anheuser-Busch InBev stepped in, announcing that it had reached a full agreement to acquire SAB Miller for $107 billion. As part of the agreement with U.S. regulators for acquiring SAB Miller, AB InBev agreed to sell its 58% interest in Miller Coors to Molson Coors for $12 billion. The merger was completed in 2016. In order to obtain approval for the merger from the U.S. Justice Department, SAB Miller agreed to divest itself of the Miller brands in the U.S. and Puerto Rico by selling its stake in Miller Coors to Molson Coors Brewing Company. (laughs) Consequently, in 2016, SAB Miller in the U.S. sold its interest in Miller Coors to Morrison Coors, who had been its partner in the joint venture for around $12 billion, where Morrison Coors Coors gained full ownership of the Miller brand portfolio outside the U.S. and Puerto Rico and retained the rights to all brands in the portfolio for for the U.S. and Puerto Rico markets. Then, in Canada, Molson Coors regained the right from SAB Miller to make and market Miller Genuine Draft, a cold-filtered beer with humble origins. Cheers, mm-hmm. buddy. Cheers to cash. To cash flow. $107 billion was part of that. That's crazy. That is, this is the dumbest thing. <laughs> AB InBev, of course, got involved and then sold off because the U.S. justice system got involved. Right. It's insane. Because somebody's buddies on the board at Molson <laughs> happened to be the secretary of commerce it it shows you how much fucking money beer ma- it's not something people Nation, think about i don't think beer, yeah it's just like how much well money that's why beer. it's nice that like local craft breweries are like sort of you know back making their baby. comeback yeah because yeah th- i mean it, this is just swill that i mean you can see they, it's just yeah, corporate they can push so much of it out yeah such low cost per piss <laughs> yeah and this is as you described it before the show a big old bottle of piss. A bottle of piss. It's How, a mimic. Yeah. Like, we after the show, let's get a picture. We'll piss in one of these. Yeah. Just and then show the other one. Yeah. I'm sure our listeners want to see it. Um, how are your first few Scratch sips? Scratch and sniff. <laughs> How are your first few snips? Well, snips going. I love to snip. Snip snap. Snippy snap. I love, uh, I told you ahead of the show that I kind of like uh, M- MGD. Yeah. But this doesn't taste good. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sad to report it does not taste good. <laughs> but it says right on the bottle, it's brewed from the finest malted barley, selected cereal grains, and choicest hops. So I read that this was originally created to mimic the taste of Miller High Life on draft. Mm. And the tagline was like, open the cap uh, beer on tap was the ta- oh. tagline. Not bad. Not bad. This was something I was going to bring up in this episode, and you just answered it, was... I don't understand. I guess Miller Lite is Miller's like flagship beer. Yeah. But in, ter- in terms of their non-light beer, which one I didn't know which one the flagship was. Whether it was Miller Genuine Draft or Miller High Life. I think They're High kind Life of competing. is competing. But you just, yeah, you answered this was meant to mimic High Life, yes. the flagship um available via draft. Yes. And so they apparently 
um, High Life was the flagship, and then like the Budweiser like overtook the market, and then Miller needed to get something to get themselves back. So oh, that's okay. when they made MGD, and then oh, okay. then MGD like overtook High Life apparently, and now MGD is actually the the like flagship right. Miller beer. But Miller Lite is still their highest sales. Oh yeah, yeah, it's America. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, that makes sense. So, so where does that leave Miller High Life then? Because technically, this is like a premium version then of of Miller High Life. Right. I don't know. I really don't know. The champagne of beers, and this is just like this black logo and everything. This just feels like. You know, an uncle at a cookout. It's, it does. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. It's what this bottle is like. It's not. Yeah, this uh, bottle in his welcoming. hand and 15 empties behind him. <laughs> yeah. It's not like a, it's not a beer where someone who's genuinely happy deep down, it's not, they're not drinking Miller Genuine Drafts with any regularity. No. So Ooh. there is some speculation in the forum here on this website. What forums? Hey, this is your journalism cap. Finally, right. boots on ground again. That's right. Stolen forums. Got my cap on. Was so Gary Gilman asks, was or is MGD simply a high life unpasteurized? Hmm. And kill all liberals responds. That's my understanding. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. What forum is this? It's on allaboutbeer.com. <laughs> Kill all liberals' responds. <laughs> but yeah, that was the uh, the idea fuck. behind Genuine Draft is that it was pasteurized and did not need to be refrigerated to like right. survive longer. Okay, so so it's like utility and then freshness and freshness in, in theory. Yes, in one convenient <laughs> package. And does it accomplish either? My <laughs> neck of the bottle down. I would say no, definitively. Yeah, it's not very good. Last I don't week, it's better than Miller Lite, though. I think. I like this better I, than I agree. Miller Lite. More flavor than Miller Lite. Yeah. But it does actually taste like beer. More flavor doesn't mean anything. I mean, shit has more flavor than <laughs> Miller Lite, but it doesn't mean it's better. It, it's it's not, I don't know. Are you going to tell another human shit story? No, I kind of regret the ever telling that story. I wish I could delete. Fan favorite. Listeners, listeners, you have to delete that episode off of your uh, podcast feed as well as the voicemails episode. I don't know how yeah. many times i got to tell you Get people. it off there. Get it off. Um, no, I, 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 I'm just saying, yes, there's more flavor. I'm not entirely sold that it's better flavor. But in terms of like, we've talked about if something actually tastes like beer, it's usually better. Doesn't it have necessarily more yeah. session ability, you know? Like yeah. you would drink more Miller Lights at a tailgate because you, you're not an uncle yet. <laughs> if you were, so if you, you were ripping be... a, a beer ball game, you could, you could suck down Miller Lights more than you could suck down Miller Ooh, beer ball. Tracks. That's an interesting one we have not discussed before mm. on this very show. We have not talked about beer ball. Uh, we, we actually haven't thought about beer ball in a long time. I know. It feels... We used to play in like college all the time. forever. We should set up the listeners for what beer ball is. Beer ball is a game. You need space. So you need you to need make green sure... green space. You need to make sure either somebody's got a big backyard, you rented an Airbnb cabin with someone with a big backyard, or that your local parks allow alcohol. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Make the sure one of those things... And basically, it's like a wiffle ball game, wiffle ball and a wiffle ball bat. Yeah, four on four, typically. Typically four on four. And what you do is you kind of underhand pitch a wiffle ball to somebody with a bat. And they hit it out into the playing field. And if they hit it out into the playing field, the other team runs and goes and gets the ball, and you throw it back to the pitcher like pitcher's hand. Yep. The gambit, the gambit, is that while that pitcher's hand is happening, while the ball's out into the field... Your guy that's on deck, guy or gal on deck, has to start chugging a beer. Mm. A Miller Lite would work better than a Miller Genuine Draft. When they finish that beer on deck, on your own team, if you hit, then you score to run. And so drinking, that's actually another thing about beer ball. Like, drinking is, like, encouraged. Like, like beer yeah, pong you... and, like, fl- flip cup and all that, you're, like, kind of trying to get out of drinking. Right. Like, beer pong, you want to avoid... But in beer ball, it's like drink as fast as you right. can, and you will score more doing runs. Doing the best is going to be feeling the worst. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if somebody's ripping balls out into the field for a while. The person on deck is just slamming beers and scoring runs, and then you only get out if you swing and miss, hit it foul, yep, or if you hit it up in the air and the, someone on the other team catches it. Yeah, yeah. So you're really like. Your, the strategy is to hit ground balls, basically. Yep. All Hammer it right into the dirt. <laughs> Hammer it down to the dirt. And, man, we had some 
We we had a beer ball tournament. A big like what? Twelve teams or something? I, that that feels like a memory that if I bring up, if I much less if I ever talk about it, that I'm like, I must be making this up. There's no way that this happened. But it did. Yeah, yeah. it was like 10, 12 teams. Yeah. A bunch of people came out to a park. We spent all day like a Saturday or something. Yeah. We had this like big piece of paper or cardboard or something where we had the tournament all written Probably out. Probably a 30 pack like turned inside out. Yeah, drawn I'm on. sure. And we had like different playing fields, like two or three playing yep. fields yep. at any given time. Teams would play. We went... I don't remember. I don't. My team didn't win, but I don't remember where we ended up. Like third or fourth. Yeah, I think you got third. Did my your team, team won? Oh, of yeah. course, Nick's team. <clears throat> Nick's team won. I wasn't. I was never going to bring up your ball because I don't like to talk about myself. How you won? How I won? Uh, well, it the, was me, my brother, who came down for the loyal listener, the loyal listener, and uh, Coco Corcor. Corcor Larson, another uh, probably not loyal fan of the show. Probably not. I don't think he listens. <laughs> and uh, Blake God Martin. Ah, uh, Blake Martin, yes. Um, <laughs> Say we, his name, Joe. Uh, no, I won't. <laughs> we had a team that was 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 fine. We were pretty good, except I had a couple. I was working at an insurance company at the time. Century Insurance mm. is where I worked. Uh, young software developer there. <laughs> and uh, Best in the biz. I brought a couple people over that I worked with. They were... Yeah, there people. were a lot of peripherals at this uh, get together, which yeah. was nice, actually. It was cool. It was like a way to everybody's meet each other. But one of the guys was younger. I'm not going to name drop him here. It's kind of embarrassing, but he was like a couple years younger. He's tall, dude, and he got oh, so yeah, drunk yeah, yeah. playing beer ball that at one point, I believe this was in the championship game. I think I was I was out like refing. I was like just like sitting there drinking another beer and watching you guys play. And I believe in the championship game, he kind of stumbled out. Stumbles out onto the field. He's in full sight of everyone, men, women, and children, <laughs> at the beer ball field that day. Pulls out his his, his little pee pee uh-huh. and just starts peeing in the middle of the field. He was it was just off off oh, the mama. field, and like somebody was like, "Hi!" Ah, they shout his name, and we're like, "Oh my god, this guy needs to go home." Um, yeah, college was a different time. It was, and I, at least some people had the de- decency to like go to a uh, hill. Mm-hmm. And then you face the decline, and you lay on your side and put your leg up, and then just pull your shorts up. I would I would assume the decency there was coming from our our good friend Coco. <laughs> that was a move that he he often popularized. Enjoyed. Yeah, <laughs> there was also a little strip of woods next to this park. What was right. the park called? Was this Vilas? Uh, yeah. Was it Vilas Park or no? I James Madison remember. Park. Was that it? Yeah, I forget. Anyway. Big shout out! People play keg ball there. Uh, d- yeah, down quite in, regularly down in Madison, keg ball Wisconsin. Is lame though. It, it's much more lame than beer ball. So, folks, if you guys are out there, if you're if you're younger, or fuck it, if you want to just get blackout drunk all day one day, go out there and play a little beer ball. Go back, rewind a couple minutes. Yeah. Listen to the rules. Yeah. Go play beer ball and and tweet at us at Cold Cans Podcast with hashtag Beer Ball Bonanza. We're here, ball. We're a beer ball. Get used to <laughs> Get it. Get used to it. Thank you. I knew you'd come in to save it. Uh, yeah, no. That would be fun. Send us a picture of that. Yeah. It's a perfect summertime activity. That really day is. the tournament was, we played from like noon to sundown, basically. And we like brought burgers and hot dogs. That's right. We were grilling. Yeah, yeah. What an amazing day. What a day. What a day. I've had other... I got married. <laughs> went on my honeymoon. Amazing days I've had. This is apples and oranges different. <laughs> yeah. This is apples and oranges different, but at the same time, like one of the best days I can remember. Just a genuinely like, because like you say, yes, there's one part where we're just in college. We're just getting rip roaring drunk. It's unhealthy. Yeah. I'm sorry, mom, that, that that we did this. And I'm sorry t- t- to Julie as well that we did this. Yes. But, um, but on the other hand, like the camaraderie mm. solidified there, branded there. I don't know. You can't find that. Like, it, it really was awesome. Everybody was on one wavelength that day. Nobody's on their fucking phones. Nobody's like, what bar are we going to next? Yeah, yeah. We're there. Yes. That's really cool. Under the sun. Yeah. By It's by a, like, lake or something. Yeah. Pond. Madison's beautiful. There's families around. <laughs> we get to see what we're going to suffer through one day. <laughs> yeah. But again, those families walk around in Madison, they've been through it all. They, 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 they probably look, looked back fondly. Yeah, yeah they, they could look, maybe not know what beer ball is, but just see the general yeah. gist of it and go, oh. God, I remember when yeah, I was I pissing remember. in an open field. <laughs> yeah, and Godspeed, everyone. Yes, yes. 
Like even the cops would would kind of cruise through, and there was yeah, we were all yeah, little, they would. I'm sure not everyone was of age at the time that was there. I mean, we were all older, but there were so many people that we didn't know. I'm sure there That's was some true. 19 we weren't year checking olds. IDs, right? Um, and the cops would kind of pull through, and people would be like, "Oh, oh the cops are looking at us." And even the cops in Madison are probably like, "Yeah." Godspeed, people. Yeah. And we really, driving. we weren't doing anything. Yeah, no, yeah we're, we're just out there being wrong. being idiots. Anyway, I don't know how we got in this. Oh, Miller Lite. You could play beer ball with Miller Lite. Yeah, that's good because you do need a light beer to chug these beers, mm-hmm. slam them down, and then get into fights over whether the foam in the can counts as needing oh, to be though. drank or not. Beer ball is one of those games. Yes. It's like Flip Cup. You get pedantic. And, and – more than most beer drinking games, the competitive juices do genuinely start to flow a little bit. Oh, yeah. Because... I remember. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I remember getting into a shouting match with you, I think, oh, I'm during sure we, this tournament. We, we've been in plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, and like our good friend, Nate Miller, friend of the show. Yep. I don't know if he is or not. Probably not. But uh, he and I got in a little shouting match. Yep. Nothing ever gets physical because whatever. It's, it doesn't need to. Deep down, we know it's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But at the surface, it's still we're like, fun. fuck you. No, I it's, did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still fun to get that tension out of there. I was never big foam guy. Some people would get in shouting matches with beer ball because, like, the foam's pouring out. That never really got to me like, oh, there's something there. It's like, yeah, everybody. It yeah, yeah, yeah. What I did get was pitching. So part of the, mm. part of the beer ball was, like, it's supposed to be, like, gentleman or gentlewoman's rules sure just kind of lob it in there and when the juices get going a little bit now <laughs> then the balls start curving and they're coming in a little bit hot yep and we would have a ref that would actually like i think for the tournament we did a ref would sit back and be like no that pitch is not you're you're fired that thing in there people aren't gonna be able to hit this well you don't have to swing you don't have to swing so that was another that was strategy. what i always said as a pitcher yeah because you just juice one in there just to see if they'll bite. Right. It, and it works. And I think I did it too, to be honest. Yeah. Like I would well, throw that's too when high it, Yeah, stuff. yeah. That's when it becomes a thing is when one team's doing it and then the other team's like, oh, hell no. Yeah. And then they do it the next inning and then it just and now we're all gets higher and higher. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think the, the, the spirit of the game, so again, there's no like, there's no walks and you can't strike yeah. out. Like if it's right down the it middle, hit. it's not a strike. You can just not swing whenever you want. It's actually a strategy while the guy on, on right. deck is break. chugging. You can just Because you're not such swing. a good hitter that he is just You know you're going to hit another base hit. Yeah. And there were some times where you'd get in the flow a little bit and you, you pretty much knew you were just going to spike one on the ground and it'd be another. Yeah. And there are other times where I'm like, I c- c- will never put one in play again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. That's a good metaphor for life overall. Flow state versus... I don't know, state. <laughs> hey, hashtag, which one are you guys in? <laughs> Update us every hour of your day. Because it changes. Uh, the I, nature of states, they change. They do. And... Oh, for the separation of California. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that preposition is. Proposition. I thought you were going to say the, the separation of Texas, seceding from the union. Yeah, that too. I'm still for that as well. <laughs> uh, speaking of flow states, uh oh, this beer's flowing down, baby. <laughs> the neck, if listeners rewind, You'll mm-hmm. see that I hated the neck. Okay. And the base is just fine. Oh, wow. Okay. I like it now at the bottom. Maybe because I'm thinking about beer ball. Maybe. Yeah, it's a good one to, it's a good beer, bar beer drinking. Yeah. Like to sit at a bar and like bullshit with your buddies and like sip on one of these. I think that gets to the heart of what's so magical about beer as a beverage is it's it's clay. Mm. Meant to be molded by your experiences. I'm not. Fu- I'm not even joking. Like, mm. like wine, you could kind of appreciate wherever. Of course, if you're in Tuscany or France or whatever, it's going to be like really nice. Versus if you're sitting in your basement drinking wine. But the wine itself is supposed to be something. This is the beer. Is the 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 Ritz cracker of of beverages in that? And I was think... once owned by Nabisco. <laughs> <laughs> No, in that I think that you, uh, I think that you, you know, you you got to make something of it. Some beer yes. is complicated, Rodenbach, all that, but so much of what we've done is beer that's shaped by what you're doing around it. Like you just said, right. like sitting in a bar bullshitting with your friends, like this is gonna taste really good after yep. a d- day of work or something. You're like, let's go get a happy hour, like, or if you just like, it's a Saturday afternoon and you crack one in your basement or whatever, then you're going to be like, oh, what the fuck am I drinking? Like, it, it's so malleable. Yeah, like right, right. And it's crazy. Even like Bud Light and mil- like natural light. I'm not going to crack a natural light and <laughs> sip on it and watch. But like, 
I have By such way, fond memories. Do you think memories. natural light has piggybacked off the like movement in food to say natural on something? Oh, you think they should have green cans? Right, right, yeah, totally natural. Yeah, all no, natural ingredients. They're on like the the natty, natty. <laughs> they side. are still, aren't they? Yeah. It's like the Keith Stone Wasted campaign with their competitors, Keystone. Yeah, yeah. 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 But maybe, because it doesn't really fit, right? You're buying that to to play beer ball with, for sure. I bet we were playing with Natty Light. (laughs) Yeah, probably. So, (laughs) to do the, like, we're green, (laughs) nobody fucking cares. Let's drink a Natural Light. I think you make a good point, though. I totally agree. Thank you. Totally agree. Usually, when I'm making a point like this, and we're on a back-to-back, and maybe we're on a (laughs) back-to-back, I'm still looking at the empty Stella in front of me. Um. You usually roll your eyes. By the way, if you then... have B2B needs uh, at your company, you can hire me. I'm very good at B2B. Back business, to ba- oh, business to business. Business to business. You, you write business to C, business copy? If you got B2C, B2B, I'd do it all. You're multidimensional. I got what all the dimensions. What is B2B copy? It doesn't matter, does it? Like if you're trying to sell to a retailer or something. Oh, okay. Like so you... get a retailer to pick up your product. Got that it. type of thing. Yeah. What were we talking about? Oh, I was complimenting you on your the thing, the bat to poetry. Bat. And I was going to compliment you on saying, generally I'm making some bullshit point, and I see you on the other side of the table kind of rolling your eyes and simultaneously coming up with a way to smooth it out to be something that makes sense. So thank you for doing that in general. Wow, Joe. Yeah. Thanks, You're a buddy. good co-host. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. And and I am also, I was going to say, just still staring at a, a empty Stella Artois in front of us. So we're oh, right. back to back. We are. We're getting emotional. Maybe we're tearing up here in the emotional. studio. Oh, you know what? Once in a while, we got to. You got to. You may gotta have... let some moisture out. Take some moisture in. Let some moisture out. No, I, I had to, I'll have to met, let a <laughs> lot of moisture out later. All orifices. Um, I think, you know, you know, we've had our, our, our differences in the beer ball field mm-hmm. with your pitching style, which is bullshit. But, effective, but um, but at the end of the day, it's always good to have a beer with you, buddy. That's right. Hey, cheers and we cheers. That. That's the show, folks. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> no. Speaking of this, like nostalgia type thing, and like sure, there's a beer advocate reviewer who I wanted to read there. Well, hey, start with the beer advocate score. Should I? Yeah. Oh, fine. I don't give a shit. What we don't have to be at that part of the show yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could. It's getting late. Okay, he says, this is the fourth beer I ever tried after Foster's, Yingling, and Budweiser. (laughs) This was the beer that really got me into using alcohol in a medicinal way to help me get to sleep. I will always... Not a good idea. I (laughs) I will always have fond memories of it because of that. But in trying it again recently, I was pleasantly surprised to find that it really does taste better than any of those other beers, with the possible exception of an on-tap Yingling. (laughs) This person has gotten some misguided <laughs> medical advice from someone. No. He'll have to... fond memories forever because he used beer in a medicinal way to fall asleep. <laughs> well, don't we all use beer in a bit of a medicinal way? Yes, we do. So and as a social emotional, lubricant? Yeah. Or otherwise. Yes, yes. bodily lubricant. <laughs> what? Yeah. We all use it in different ways. We sure do. Uh, you're on Beer Advocate. You're on the tab. List the damn score. I got I'm so many dots. Damn tabs open, I can't even find it. Two point two seven out of five, which translates to poor. Yeah, I mean, poor me another. <laughs> yeah, I, I buy that. That's all I'll say. Yeah, and it's four point six six percent. I don't know why they went with that. Four point six 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 percent alcohol. <laughs> hmm. uh, the beer that, of the devil. But it, but it this remi- is communion in a satanic church. <laughs> yeah, in hell. <laughs> you're gonna take communion with MGD, <laughs> and you're baptizing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> no, that was. I think you made a good point. That I didn't mean to shit on by saying natural light, uh, taking that in that direction. No, I think you it's didn't a good point. It. It's good. I and mean, that's what we've talked about a lot on this show is how beer like fits into these different scenarios, and that's yeah. what makes it great. And just the very nature of beer and the low ABV, like very sippable. Like, it's inherently sessionable compared to, like, hard liquor or wine, you know? Right. Even if it is Miller Lite. Right. And that's nice, too. You're in for a nice controlled evening. Right. Well, yeah. The, yeah, you're right. The the sessionability scores that we talk about, if we were just relative to everything we can mention, they'd all be high. Right. It's all relative. But this is, like, the most sessionable drink in every definition of the word mm. in the world. More than water. <laughs> Visit water.org. Oh, water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Matt Damon, uh, friend of the show. Yeah, big friend. Um, all right, let's get to this. Let's rank this. Yeah, let's rank it. Son of a bitch. I I really like the track that MGD took this train on, mm. this bullet train. We talked Course beer territory. ball. We got emotional. We're burping into the mic. I'm a little burpy. I'm sorry, listeners. Oh, we didn't do that uh, parable of terrible. Oh, shit. Shoot. Well, let's Tie do it me quick. Up let's, then we'll get me to the rankings. Sandy. Um, so I brought in some Oreos. <laughs> Nick, I like follow Oreos. N- N- Nicholas Patriot, whatever it is on, on Snapchat. Snapchat. I'm not much, no, it's N Patriot. Follow N Patriot Snapchat for all your Oreo reviews. Come on, needs. guys. I need more followers. Show me how to get more followers on Snapchat. <laughs> He's serious. He needs it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so these are birthday cake Oreos. Okay. Because when this episode comes out, it's going to be right around some oh, guy's little birthday. A little Nikki Peepee's bo- birthday. Nikki Peepee's BB. Is uh, it? Hold on. When will this come out? It'll Folks, come out. Don't say on... my exact birthday, but it'll <laughs> okay. come out around my birthday. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, hey. Yeah, I guess past me to current you now as you listen to this. I mean this. I'm not even going to look at you because I'm looking beyond you. <laughs> Forward. Happy birthday, buddy. You deserve it. I looked at you. You deserve it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What now? What was that now? That sounded like future <clears throat> me. Have we have we <laughs> broke the space the, time continuum, the continuum with the Cold Cans podcast? With the genuine draft in hand. Should we do another concept episode? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great idea, Joe. <laughs> Give me a cookie. The critics will love it. Give me so an these Oreo. are birthday cake Oreos. Birthday cake Oreos. They also make them with the golden cookies, which I actually prefer. But these are the ones I had in house right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, L- listeners should know they come in a little Ziploc baggie, the kind well, of Ziploc bag that that no non sociopath buys, because it's the Ziploc bag that wouldn't fit a slice of bread. So this is one that can only be used for five Oreos or a handful <laughs> of baby carrots. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Because if you get one that fits a slice of bread, sure, you could also put five Oreos or a handful of baby carrots. It's the in Costco it. Ziploc variety pack, Joe. Oh, you it's get a variety the sandwich pack. bags too. Oh, hey, hey, I Are you in the business? all criticism. So you would put four Oreos in a sandwich bag and waste that much plastic? Yes. If I didn't buy a Costco variety pack, sure, assuredly, a knot of waste of plastic. <laughs> Surely, a way to conserve not, yeah. plastic is to buy. The Costco variety pack. Costco is all about saving. I'm all about multi-use, mm, multi-tool. No, no unitaskers. No, not with Ziploc bags, baby. Uh, give me the gallon bags. I'll put five <laughs> Oreos in it. Yeah, yeah. I just have to squeeze and then out wash the air. It. Pff, yep. And then zoop. And then there's still a little bit of air and it pieces you off. <laughs> yeah, I, so I buy a vacuum sealer. From Remington Prox. What am I doing? Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Cheers to the Oreo. Listeners don't hear us cheers, but we really do physically yeah. touch the pieces of food we're about to eat together. So Cheers. I'll, Are okay, you going to eat, eat it first? first? Yeah. You, you talk. It's my birthday, after all. Why wouldn't you eat first? Uh, what's your birthday wish, <laughs> big boy? My wish for me. Um, No, I, I don't know what I want to do with my, on my birthday. It seems like we're at an age where you got to do something that's like somewhat feels like an accomplishment on your birthday. It's not fun to just go like get pissed up on a birthday anymore. It should be like you're doing something for yourself, you know? Like two years ago when I did that run, like a 10-mile run or something like that, like trained for it, led up to it on my birthday. Yeah. Still went out after and you had drinks with everybody. And that's one of my most fond memories that night coming back from that drive uh, from the run. Because well, it was like out in the woods, so I came and dry, drove back, and then we started drinking almost immediately. It was indeed an impressive run, I'll say. Go ahead and eat your Oreo. I'll, Thanks, I'll Joe. Respond. Um, in that your rebuttal, <laughs> my rebuttal is um, no. Actually, I'm going to pile on because you know what? That's what MJD makes me feel. It makes me feel emotionally piling on. Um, you really know it was like 13 miles or something fucking insane, wasn't it? It was 10. Oh, it was 10 miles. Well, okay, I take everything I'm about to say back. No, it was still an impressive run, and it gets back to the what we were just talking about with beer is it's very malleable. That beer tastes good after a 10-mile run. It's yeah. birthday. Like you said, it's not self-serving. You're coming back. You're with your friends. Yeah, it was great. Some of my fondest, fondest memories. Fantastic. Yeah. My fondle. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but honestly, that is great. And uh, I think it's just like, it's nice to plan something ahead of time for your birthday. Yeah. Because the easy thing is to just go and get pissed off. Yeah, we're going to a brewery. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. You still have fun, but it's Mimosas. not. Mimosas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mimosas for everybody. 
<laughs> That's everyone who drinks mimosas. Yeah, I uh, I love mimosas, and on my birthday, hope to get a pitcher full, endless, <laughs> bottomless. Sir, and that's fine. I, the I bottomless admit. has a bottom. <laughs> We're at Central Cinema again, and they've put another sign up next to the, yeah, yeah. the pretzel sign, and then there's the bottomless The Glock policy. Sign. Your friend comes in here often with the pretzels. <laughs> you with the bottomless mimosas. Anyway, uh, by the way, not parable at all. Yeah, I like those Oreos on their own, but it does not pair well with the beer. Yeah. Maybe the golden ones would, but the chocolate with the, right. the MGT. right. Does not mix. Chocolate and piss do not mix. <laughs> Don't mix it at home, folks. It's <laughs> terrible. Oh, no. Chocolate and piss is like you do mix that at home. <laughs> That's true. In one bowl. Right in that bowl. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> oh, it went in my mouth. We tried to throw it away. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still on the chocolate and piss train. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, That's good stuff. It is good stuff. Pee pee and poo poo jokes. <laughs> <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. It really is. Uh, let's get. Let's take the bullet train home and get to the rankings. Good idea. We all know the beer tiers by now. This does. I'm not. It's not cream. I'm not wild, <laughs> and it's. Not, I'm not mild even. Yeah. I'm. It's deplorable to me. Yeah. Question is where? Should I read Taint to Tip amongst the deplorables? N- yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I yeah, <laughs> I didn't catch the among the deplorables at first. And not the whole thing. I wasn't going to listen to all of amongst them. The, if you want you want me to do the all of them, I'll do all of them. No, I'll just do amongst the deplorables. So at the bottom is number 47 and that's Olympia and then going up is Milwaukee's Best Premium, Molson Canadian, Schlitz, America, which we reviewed as Budweiser. Right. Um Miller 64, Michelob Ultra, Miller Light, Coors Light, Schaffner for Hefeweiss and Grapefruit Beer, Rolling Rock, Paps Blue Ribbon, Guinness Draft Stout, and at number 34, the top of the deplorables, Bud Light Lime. And do not go back and listen to that episode. Delete it. How many times do I have to tell you guys that? How many letters does our lawyer have to send out? Yeah. We can't quite pin down. We don't quite have the analytics to pin down all of you that are still <laughs> listening to it. But If you need help with analytics, hire me. <laughs> Nick is an SEO analytics machine. Yes. For B2B, B2B or B2C. <laughs> or B2, not as or much P2, for B2B, but I'll do B2C. Or P2P. <laughs> or P2C. P2, P2 piss and chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. I was going piss and poop. Oh, yeah. P2P. PP and poo-poo. <laughs> That's good stuff. It keeps the listeners coming back after all these episodes. Oh, yeah. The PP and poo-poo jokes. They love it. They can't get enough. <laughs> they eat Who, it up. They're like, what do I do every day? I piss and I shit. We all do. Pee pee and poo poo we make. Let's make jokes. <laughs> Universally, fun. it's like talking about the weather. We should it be is. able to go and hang out in like business situations. <laughs> I instead agree. Of, instead of saying like, "Man, the rain out there," you should be able to meet somebody in a social networking event and be like, "Do you take how any big it? shits yeah, today? How was it today? <laughs> yeah, because we've all done it. And then it. they pull it up on their app. You touch phones and you transfer pictures and Pics stats. Of your pee pee and your poo poo and the stats involved. Ugh. And then you just share it. It's an important part of health. Gut health. I, poop health. Oh, yeah. Now we're back to gut mm-hmm. health. <laughs> it's been too long. I it, I don't like thinking about pictures of poop. I don't think we should well, be talking sure. about it on the show. <laughs> Only because of the stigma, Joe. If we raise <laughs> our children. Hey, the stigma. What are we talking about? Let's, yeah, let's get back to it. it. Deplorable. I see a very clear spot for this. Oh, okay. Shoot it. Uh, beneath... Rolling Rock above Chef of Hoof of Hefeweiss Grapefruit Beer. Really? Hmm. So ahead of Miller Lite as well. Ahead of Miller Lite, of course. Yeah, I agree with that. And yeah, I don't like Chef of Hoof Hefeweizen. Do I like this more than Rolling Rock? No. PBR and Rolling Rock are better. I think that's great. So that'd be our, our new 39. Rolling Rock was our old 38. So it's our new 39 best beer. Which corresponds time. with my age. I'm turning 39 years old this year. Yeah. And the listeners, get on Twitter. Get on at Cold Cans Podcast. And why don't you wish little Nikki P, the good little boy, the VGB, the very good boy, a very happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Anymore.